Hi, welcome to the Insecure Chef again. Remember, this is the uh, cooking channel that proves to men that they can work in the kitchen without going through the emergency room, which is a novelty for most of us. So today I'm going to take a shot at the uh, Chinese uh, dinner, General Tao's chicken. Very, very popular uh, dish. Many of you, I'm sure, have had it. Um, one of the big problems with the, this dish is that the heart of it is really a chicken nugget. And if you are uh, ever tried making anything that's breaded, we all know what some of the problems that you can run into. To be honest with you, to make this as simple as possible for yourself, the sauce is uh, nothing to do, very easy to make. Go out and buy yourself a couple of boxes of pre-made chicken nuggets. That would be the simplest way to do it. Just plain ordinary chicken nuggets, breaded, ready to go, frozen, and you can make this dish probably in under a half hour, maybe 20 minutes. However, that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to make the chicken nuggets from scratch, and then from that, we're going to turn it into General Chow's chicken. So, with my trusty camerawoman and my lovely wife, Regina, to help us out, we're going to start the uh, process uh, with the chicken nugget preparation. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to start, as I said, we're making this batter. This batter, uh, according to the people who taught me how to make it, is very much like a tempura batter. You don't want it very heavy and thick because that's not really the way the General Cho's nugget is. So, to make this batter, it, ingredients wise, very easy to use. Uh, I'm sorry, very easy uh, to make. Uh, the actual process to get it nice and smooth, that could be a different story. So, we're going to start out with, make sure I measured it correctly, we started out with a half a cup of very cold water. It's important, it has to be very cold. So, I'm going to pour that into my first dish. The next thing is I'm going to take one large egg, very cold. Again, very important that it be very cold. And I'm going to crack it and put it in here. Okay. And I'm also going to put in the shell. No, I'm just kidding. That's a mistake. So let me just get that out of there. And there it is. No problem. All right. Now, um, thirdly is the three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. The whole catch to the thing, of course, is it has to be smooth because you don't want bumps and lumps all over the chicken nuggets. So I'm going to sift that flour into that water and egg mixture. Okay, I'm going to do that, and then we're going to start the process of sifting it. This won't take long at all. Okay, we're almost done already, and that should do it. So that's the end of that. Now the final step would seem to be the simplest, but in reality it isn't. The idea now is we're going to have to mix this into a batter without whisking it or, or beating heavily. So all we're going to do is you're going to take a fork and you're going to just start going back and forth with it, nice and peacefully and slow. Now, most people would be amazed to hear the next word out of my mouth, but that word is patience. Okay, to do this properly, you have to be patient and just start twirling it around until it eventually will come together, hopefully, as a batter. So when I get closer to it, we'll come on back. Take a look now. I've been kind of moving this around with the fork for a while. Probably, I bet you, every bit of seven or eight minutes, maybe longer. And you'll see now it has become a, uh, a batter. And I'm going to stop messing with it at this point. I think I got just about all the flour in there. Probably not all of it, but good as it's going to get. So, next step is the breadcrumbs which is very simple. It's just a, a cup of breadcrumbs. You may need more, you may not use as much. And about a half a teaspoon or so of uh, sea salt, which I am not gonna use in this recipe. That's a personal preference, but you can certainly put as much salt or no salt, or whatever you think is appropriate for your diet. So now the next step is really what comes down to business. I'm gonna take out the chicken, which I've already prepared, and, um, and I'll, uh, begin the process of the battery. So, here's the chicken that I made uh, earlier today. All it is, I'm using uh, chicken thighs, about uh, 10 to 12 ounces of chicken thigh, which I 
cut up into, best I could, cubes to resemble chicken nuggets. And I think you can see those here. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the batter into the breadcrumbs, and then I'm going to put it on this uh, uh, cooling tray simply so any excess batter that might drip off will go down on the aluminum foil I put underneath, and eventually into the uh, into the Ninja Foodie. Now, if you'll come over to the Foodie itself, uh, right now you, you may notice, I don't know if you can see it, the camera's hard, but I have it on broil, and I'm just preheating it um, for 10 minutes, because broil gets to the highest temperature that this uh, device goes to, be, it's about 425 to 450. So I want to preheat it first. Then we'll be switching over to air frying. So I still got six minutes, so we'll be right back. All right, so we're going to uh, start the battering process right now. And the way that's done, as far as I know, is simply going to take some pieces of the chicken, put it in the batter, I'll take a couple at a time, if I can get it out making sure they're not touching each other because otherwise you're going to run into a problem trying to get them separated. I'll put in, let's say, four for now. Okay? And then, what I'm going to do at that point is I'm going to roll them around, make sure they're completely covered in the batter. Easy to lose track of them in here. There's the fourth one. I'll try to get all this excess off this. Okay. And once you're satisfied that they're uh, completely covered to your satisfaction, uh, we're going to put them in the breadcrumbs. Nothing unusual about this process. I'm sure you've made any other, all kinds of other dishes in a similar manner. So I'm taking out the uh, first nugget. I'm going to put it in the batter. Take out the second, put it in the batter, take out the third, and I'm going to oh, wait on that one. So now I'm just going to make sure it gets completely covered, and this is important because this is the heart of the nugget. Okay, so I'm just rolling it around. I hope that it sticks well. And I think that's probably satisfactory. So now I'm just going to pick it up carefully, if I can, and move it onto this rack. And then we'll con continue the process. So when these are done, we'll be, uh, we'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, we're down to about 15 seconds in the uh, preheating. As I mentioned, I'm doing that on, uh, on broil. Now, this will be uh, plenty hot, very hot actually, so be careful on the next set of steps. Okay, so it's going through the, that seven or eight second cooling cycle. And when that's done, what we're going to do then is we're going we're gonna to open up and then we're going to start putting in the nuggets, uh, as many as I can get, into the uh, air fryer basket uh, without them touching each other. Otherwise, they're going to all come together as big one big chicken. So I'm going to start that. I'm turning the foodie back on. I'm going to go to, uh, well, i got to open this first. And I'm going to start putting them in by hand the best I can, trying not to burn myself because this is very hot from the preheating step. So I think you can see you know, where I'm putting them, trying to keep them from touching each other. Obviously, I'm going to have to do this in batches. So, we'll uh, see how that goes. Now, once uh, once this is filled, I'm going to be very careful not to burn myself. I'm trying to make sure I keep as much of the breading on as possible. I think I can get in there one more. Okay, here comes that guy. And try to, I guess that'll be as good as it gets. All right, so let me just wash off my hands briefly. And uh, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to start the air frying process and see how it goes. So I'm going to close the lid. 
I'm going to press uh, the crisp for the air fryer step. I'm going to drop the temperature to 360 degrees. And I'm just going to set this for 20 minutes, but they shouldn't take that long. So the, the process has started. And uh, we'll come back in just uh, a little bit when we think we're getting close to the end. Okay, uh, as you see, we're coming down to 15 minutes, which means it's been cooking for uh, about five. So at the 15 minute mark, I'm going to open this up, take a look, and now I'm going to flip them over as best I can. All right, so I'm doing this flipping as best I can do this. This is one of the hardest things I've had trouble with. I have the same problem with pancakes. So, so far I'm actually not doing badly. Well, they certainly have a crunch to them, as uh, as they should. And this is the last one here. Okay, I'm going to make sure again they don't touch. And we're going to close it down, and we're going to continue the frying process. So, we'll again be back shortly. Okay, um, I'm guessing at this point that the uh, nuggets will probably be done. So I'm going to be checking that right now. Take, take a look at those. They don't look too bad at all. Mm. And I'm just going to check the temperature, because this is chicken. And yes, no problem. We're in the 160s and 170s. Uh, you need a minimum of 165 according to our health department. And these are around 170 and even a bit higher. So we're going to say that these are done. And uh, I'm going to try to pick them up without dropping them in the sink. No, that's not going to work. Let's get a fork here. I'll just get a fork. I think they'll be okay at this point. Because uh, I don't think there's any more crumbs to come off. Yeah, they seem to be nice and crunchy, that's for sure. Yeah, nice. And you have to understand, uh, as we mentioned, this step in the process of making a General Chow's chicken, this is normally the deep fryer step. So uh, this is my attempt at moving it over to the, uh, to the Ninja Foodie, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Louise and the salted pepper, because she makes her regular chicken nuggets this way. So I figured, well... Why couldn't I take these, instead of deep frying them, and use these in the recipe? So now the next uh, step is to put the next batch in, and we'll be back in a little while. All right, so here is the finished product. This is just ordinary chicken nuggets. You could eat them exactly as you see them, which we've already started on. You can put ketchup or honey or use them in another recipe, which is what we'll be doing shortly as I now set up for the actual uh, sauce and final preparation for General Cow's chicken. And uh, right now, here's my lovely Hi. wife and my camera lady and my assistant. So uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so at this point, I put the uh, sauce that I had prepared earlier in a wok and I'm starting to get it to a boiling point. I will have the recipe for the sauce on the site right under this video. It would take too long for me to rattle them off and much easier for you to read them at your leisure. So if you're looking here, you'll see the sauce is uh, just starting to come to a, a boil. And at this point, I'm throwing, I'm going to lower the heat down a bit. And I'm going to put in um, the broccoli. Okay, the broccoli is now in. Stir that around a little bit. And we're going to let that uh, come to a boil. And when it does... One of the most uh, difficult parts of this is uh, the last step. Put the chicken back in. <laughs> and that's it. So uh, we're just going to wait this, for this to boil. And uh, when it does, we'll uh, get the chicken in and then we'll plate it. All right, the uh, last step before the chicken is I'm going to be adding a water and cornstarch starch mixture. The uh, com combination of that it will also be part of the recipe. And I'm doing this essentially to help uh, thicken up the sauce. So I'll be putting that in now, stirring it, just going a bit at a time, just to see, you know, how it looks. If by some chance it gets too thick, just add a little more water. If it's uh, not thick enough, make more cornstarch and uh, water mixture. Now the thing when adding cornstarch is you gotta give it just a little time between additions because sometimes it'll sneak up on you and get thick in a hurry. My camera lady reminded me that uh, that was not the final dish because I hadn't yet put on the sesame seed and uh, green onion garnish. 
So hopefully this is now the final dish.